Would you like to learn how to start with digital scrapbooking for free? Keep watching! Hello everyone, my name is Tina, I'm the designer and co-founder of Victoria Designs. Now digital scrapbooking is not exactly like regular scrapbooking, there's no glue at all. So for once your fingers are not going to stick together. Digital scrapbooking is making a beautiful scrapbooking page on your computer and then when it's finished you can share it online or you can have it print by a professional printer to make an album. You can find kits where you can get creative with everywhere on the internet. Most of them are for sale and some are for free too, so you can try it out. A digital scrapbooking kit typically consists of 12 by 12 backgrounds and a bunch of PNG elements to put everywhere on top. PNG is a type of file that has a transparent background and this way you don't have to cut anything out. Now normally to get started with digital scrapbooking you need special software like Photoshop or Photoshop Elements but I'm going to teach you in this video how to do that online for free on befunky.com. This way you can see if digital scrapbooking is something for you without investing in special software. Since Halloween is on its way, I'm going to use our haunted house digital scrapbooking kit to show you how it's done. Now this is a digital tutorial of course, but if you like paper crafting like I do and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel and we make a lot of tutorials with glue too. I promise you will get sticky fingers. And now let's start. So go to befunky.com, click on photo editor and then click on open, go to computer, and open one of the 12 by 12 backgrounds from the kit. Then in the top left corner, click on the upper icon that says Images Layers and click on Computer. And then import all the PNG elements that you want to play with. And they will appear on the left. I also imported a few letters from the alpha from this kit. I also import a picture I want to use on this page. Of course you can use a lot more pictures. Overall tip, I recommend to start with a few larger pieces first and then gradually use smaller items. So the first element I'm going to use is this beautiful hinge. Just click on it on the left and drag it onto the paper. And use the corner handles to make it smaller or larger as you like. Now. You can just drag your items on the backgrounds as you like, but it'll be much, much more nice if you have a drop shadow under the heavier items. And a drop shadow will create the illusion that it is far more real than if you don't use it. Now, Be Funky doesn't have a drop shadow ability, but there's a walk around and I'm going to use it a lot in this video. Right click on the elements, Click Duplicate Item, then a bit lower click on Move Backwards. Then in the Image Properties window, click on Color Overlay and move it to the black. And then the final step, click on Options and slide the opacity a bit down. And those four steps I'm going to repeat a hundred times. Then I want another hinge. I'm just going to click on the top layer, click Duplicate Item and slide the duplicate right in place and then again right click duplicate item move backwards color overlay black and options opacity down until i'm happy and that is such a difference that drop shadow that we created now the second thing i want on there is another element and that is a piece of paper now use the top handle to turn the object any way you like and use the corner handles to make it smaller or larger and just click in the middle and drag wherever you want it and that's that's basically it again for the rub shadow duplicate item move backwards color overlay black options opacity down there we go see what a difference that makes and now on that piece of paper i want a drawing from an old house so I just drag it in there, turn the top handle to turn and then make it smaller until I'm happy and drag it into place. It's that simple. And then on top of the paper, I want the clip. So there's a clip in there. Obviously it's now way too large, so I'm making it smaller and dragging it into place. Like that. 
and again, duplicate item, move backwards, color overlay, opacity. And what a difference that makes. And now I want to drag in a picture of myself. So I'm going to drag in a frame. Resize it, turn it. Now I see that I want to move the piece of paper with the house and the clip and everything a bit more to the left. And now I'm dragging a rectangle around the clip and the paper and everything. And obviously I can't avoid the hinge on top. Just click on the hinge whilst holding Ctrl or Command and that selection will disappear. And now only those items I once selected are selected and I can move in move them into place. I just added another drop shadow to the frame. And when I will, I will put a picture in there, don't laugh, that's me on a Halloween party 20 years ago. I was an angel, my sister was a devil. Resize the image into place and obviously I don't want the image on top of the frame. So right click and click move backwards until it's completely below the layer of the frame and the layer of its drop shadow. Here's a tip. If the frame doesn't really have the proportions of your item, you can always change the proportions of any element by holding shift while uh, dragging a corner handle like this. Just don't overdo it because it will look a bit weird, but a little bit is just fine. Let's put this back into place like that. And then I want another piece of paper behind the other one. Just going to put it into place. I'm going to move it completely backwards until it's under everything. Just keep clicking move backwards. Okay, I want it there. And then again, for the drop shadow, the four steps. And also in this pack, I have a few crunch pieces and some other digital scrapbooking packs have items like that too. And I like things a bit grungy. So I'm putting it here and moving backwards until it's behind the hinge. But I think it's a bit too dark. But you know, you can change colors. Just click on color overlay. And if you click in the window, you can change any color you like. But if you really want it to fit, there's an eyedropper tool. Click on that and then click somewhere in your page and you see it gets all the colors where you go over it so i'm going to click somewhere in the house and see it gets a more brownish color just like the house where i clicked and in the color overlay window you can still make it a bit lighter or a bit darker and i also want to reduce the opacity again options opacity and it's taken care of Okay, and so I'm going to put in another piece of grunge in the other corner and I find it way too dark as is, so you can just reduce the opacity if you like. But I'm going to give it a color overlay like that. It's hardly visible, but it's there and it makes a difference. Then I'm going to incorporate another frame, but this one, I'm just going to use the edges as a bit of decoration. So I'm going to put it really behind the paper. Just keep clicking, moving backwards and move into place. Going to give this a little drop shadow too, although it's not really necessary. I'm also going to put a light piece of decoration behind the other picture. And now that the biggest items are in place, the decorating begins. This is so much fun. Just slap it on. I'm going to speed up the video right now.
For this video, I also have a frame with a matching glass dome where you could put stuff behind it and it's very realistic. So I'm going to put this frame in here. Now it doesn't really fit on this page I find, but I'm going to put it in any way just to show you what you can do with this. So I'm putting in the frame, resizing it. And then in the frame, I'm going to put a rose, a black rose. So it's in the frame and then I'm going to put it backwards, of course, and give it a drop shadow. And I've got to give the frame a drop shadow too. And then I'm going to insert a dome. So obviously it's too big, but resize it until it fits the inside of the frame. And now it looks like a medallion with a rose in there. Now, if you find the white light reflection a bit too much, just options, lower the opacity until you're happy. And see, that looks very, very realistic. And there's a round glass dome in there also. Another tip, like this butterfly, I find the white in its wings a bit too harsh, so I want to give it another color. But if I will click color overlay, the whole butterfly will become that color. So that's not what I want, I just want the white. So select the butterfly and click on tint. Then obviously you can choose a color by hand, but I'm going to use the eyedropper tool again. And when you're happy with your whole page, it's time to save. So just click on save on the top, click on computer, choose JPEG or PNG, keep the quality to 100, of course, you want the best, and click save. And this way the image will get saved to your computer. I hope you got inspired by this tutorial. Give a thumbs up if you liked it and don't hesitate to share this video with friends that might like it too. And I'll see you next time. Bye.